All right, Miss Jackie. So you want Miss Jackie has a testimony. The Lord healed her. So you wanna, you wanna? Okay, I'm bringing the mic to her. I don't, she doesn't want to be upstage. Yeah, I have been. Can anyone hear me? Is it okay? Uh, hard of hearing for a few years now, and I just figured, uh, you know, I'm just gonna stand against it. But it was getting worse and worse, and lately I've had to just go right up to people to see what they were uh, saying to me. And tonight we got prayer. Um, Karina prayed for me, and I can hear so much better. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to believe for a full restoration of her healing, he hearing tonight. Amen. So I praise God for that. God is a miracle working God. And without further ado, Brother Mike, praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. She can hear better. Go be hear me better. That's why they call her lucky. All right. Thank you for showing up to the Deliverance Center. God bless you. We've had an incredible year. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. YouTubers. You've been fantastic with your donations. We had dozens of people fly in from out of state that stayed at the healing house. About 80% of them got healed and delivered. And uh, they don't have any money for a hotel. So we give them a place to stay. And uh, we've just had tremendous success with it because of you. Paid the bills over there donations amazing you paid all the bills around here this building this year it was great never been late on a payment all the money comes in it's mercy what's that telling you hey God's got something around going on around here we're gonna get a deliverance revival here I don't know when it's coming, but it's going to be the first one in the United States. There's never been a deliverance revival before, and we're going to get it. Already got the inside scoop on. Plus, I'm developing a Glosa choir. Keep your eye on that. If you can speak in tongues and want to be in the choir when the revival starts, I hope you'll sign up. Will be the first close acquire in the history of America. Some of you may not be interested in close acquires, as I <laughs> had to notice that, but I'm interested in it, and that's all that matters. All right, I don't know what the next seminar is going to be on the 28th. I'll uh, figure it out later. All right, I'm on the radio every day, and I forgot to put the new times on there. Strike that. Uh, you can catch all the radio programs on the website 24-7 at our new times. I'll fix that slide for next week. I apologize. Uh, I'm on secular radio on the Internet. This is not a Christian station. I'm up to about 2,100 listeners last week. So I'm still down a little bit from when I uh, went in the hospital. Whittling away at it. <clears throat> if you happen to shop on Amazon, you can help us out by donating. They will donate money if you buy something on Smile Amazon. And you put our our uh, charity name in there, and they will donate to us. And Good Search will do the same thing. If you switch over from Google, tonight's broadcast is live on House of Healing AZ on our YouTube training channel. We have four others. Okay. Order the miracle list. Send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you for home self deliverance. YouTubers, you must open up a terror cell in your church and start terrorizing the devil by slowly picking off the sick people. Okay? You're called by God to do that. Every person is called by God to have a ministry of some kind. There's all kinds of different ministries, and you're called by God to have one. You are not called to coast through your Christian life like some gutless coward. That is not your calling. 
gutless coward is not in the Bible. You are to get involved in some ministry. May I make a suggestion? A terror cell. They work fantastic. You open it up in your church, two or three gathered together. You guys get together praying. You target a sick person in the church. You sneak up on that sick person. It's easy to do. Hi, how are you? I'm Mike. Mind if I talk to you for a second? Would you mind if we prayed for you? I noticed you've got this and that. Yes, I'd like somebody to pray for me. Bang, you got them. You take them out to the woods. No. <laughs> no, it's a different movie. You take them to some quiet room or meet at a house. Hey, use your creativity. And that person gets healed. Then they tell somebody about it. Then word of mouth starts to kick in. And before you know it, you've got this secret club in the church. And it starts growing. A few months later, the pastoral staff finds out about it. They throw you out of the church. That's when God is expanding your ministry. It's not a negative thing to get thrown out of the church. It's a positive thing. I've been thrown out of several places. I sign autographs over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hear that anointing? Yeah, just, just. Hey, thanks for your donations again. Again, we all these services we provided, we've had thousands of people delivered from demons here. We've had hundreds of people healed. A lady just testified about her ears tonight. It's all grace. It's mercy. You know, this isn't a star system here. I'm a regular person like everybody else. Grace. See, where sin abound. That's the key. And you can donate on the website. All right, these three books are in the uh, bookstore. How do you get cured from mental illness? Day. How do you get healed physically? Day. How do you sneak up on the devil? Boom. Trifecta. The address has been corrected by Kelly. I had East there. It was actually West. So if you go to East Florence, we're not going to be there. And I, and I, uh, we'll be at West Florence in Los Angeles, assuming that you know the fires are put out. All right. Now let's do a little. Christian psychology tonight. Want to? One person does. That's okay. The rest of you, are, we'll pray for you later. As you know, your mind is the seat of your free will. Your spirit man is the seat of the Holy Ghost. Your conscience is the seat of your morals. Your body is the seed of all the other crap. Your carnal life. And your soul is the seed of your emotions. Your emotions come out of your soul. The devil loves the human soul. Because he's able to put a little ring in it. He put a ring in a hog's nose and Pull the Christian around his Mickey Mouse Christian life by pulling on their emotion. If the devil can get you to live your Christian life based on emotions, you will end up a spiritual failure. Disciples live out of their spirit, man, not their emotions in the soul. The devil wants you to feel everything. The soul is given you by God and it's something good. Human emotion is a positive thing. But the devil always takes what's positive, he perverts it. That's his job. Carnal Christians, 100%, 
always live out of their soul. Disciples live out of their spirit. Now you know why the devil always brings you a fresh load of crap. You know what he's doing there? He's trying to get you emotionally involved. See? Rocky Balboa said, hey, yo, I ain't emotionally involved. When you become emotionally involved, now you're on the devil's carousel. And he's going to ride you right into a total disaster. How's he do it? Well, he always looks for something in your soul that you are attached to. If you're not attached to it, he doesn't focus on it. You mom, are you a mother? Who that? Now the devil is going to come at that woman through that kid. Why? That kid's hooked in there, hardcore. Okay? A child in Ethiopia is not going to get to her, so he's not going to focus on her. If you're married, the devil goes for the spouse. Why? The spouse has got a hooking. The spouse on TV, he's not going to bother with because you don't care. He only goes for stuff you care about in your soul. Things you are emotionally attached to. <laughs> For several years, I've always bought a brand new pick. Always had a new pickup. I like pickups. I'm watching that too. You know what happens every time I get a new pickup? God sends me a blessing. I get a dent in it. It's unbelievable. Every time I get a new vehicle, I get a dent in it. Happened on my last pickup until I finally caught on. I caught on. I had a, some soulish affection for a new pickup, and the Holy Ghost was saying, Whoa, wait a minute here. You're kind of emotionally tied into a material thing. Well, that's going to hurt you, Mike. Now, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to allow it to happen. Boom! Somebody backs out. <laughs> Bang! Hits my pickup. If somebody doesn't hit the pickup, I mean, this is right. I mean, this is like Moses praying. It's going to happen. I hit something. And it's not a massive dent, it's a, like a scrape. It's like that. <laughs> Scratches. The last two pickups, I caught on. I got the vehicle new, and I expected a dent. <laughs> Now let's take a look at Sarah, the woman of God. Here we go. Ready? Let's go. Sarah, Abram's wife, she bore no children. She had a handmaid, an Egyptian named Hagar. Now, I don't have all the details about this family, but I've been a counselor for 37 years, so 
I genetically know all the details. Sarah was, to use a slang term, shot. No offense. She was old. Okay. Hagar, to use a slang term, was hot. Oh man, Hagar was a looker. She was built. She was from Egypt. Well, Sarah couldn't have any children. And in America, that doesn't amount to too much because we only have 2.1 kids per family here in America. The population is growing here in America, but only because of immigration. Okay, we are, We're like Germany now. If, you don't, if we don't have any immigration, the population is not going to grow. We're going to sink like that. And back then, it was mentally, emotionally, morally ca catastrophic if you didn't have any kids. Not like now, where you can, you know, a lot of women don't want. I'm good. Back then, nobody was good. Everybody cranked out kids. So this is a major soul issue for Sarah, a major one. Before this, this is Genesis 16, before this, God had come to Abraham and made the promise to him. He said, your wife, Sarah, no offense, the old bag is going to supernaturally have a child. With a uterus that looks like a prune. See, you serve a God who sees things that are not as though they were. Abraham believed every word he said and became the father of faith. Sarah believed it, but like American Christians, as time goes on and you don't see the prayer answer, they collapse. Sarah had the promise, heard from God, but her soul and fear, which is in the soul, caused her to pull this stunt in Genesis 16. What stunts that? Her handmaid, her servant, Okay. Now, how did they do it back then? The dad or the father was the head of the home, above the wife. But the home servants were all in charge under the wife. The wife ran the servants, not the father. So Abraham never came to her and said, hey, you know, maybe we, we ought to start hedging our bets here on Jehovah. And Hagar is bootalicious. So why don't we? No, he didn't do that. She did it. She came up with the idea. It was her idea. Why? It's her soul with fear in her soul, not Abraham. So she says, hey, the Egyptian gals, they're all hot babes. Why don't you take her as your concubine? So to speak. Now, when this happened in Genesis 16, check this out. Abraham is 86 years old. This happened almost 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. Isaac wasn't born until 14 years later. After this whole thing played out, Abraham became a breeding machine. Whoa. He started having kids like a daycare. Abraham was the type of person when he got God's promise, man, he ran with it. He said, Sarah, honey, you're pooped out. But I, I got the anointing. I'm going to get me some more wives and concubines. And I'm going to personally raise up enough kids to fulfill God's prophecy. Jews like the sand on the seashore. Abraham. Nailing it. Sarah said to Abraham, Behold, now 
the Lord has restrained me from bearing. Oh, she fits right in with American Christianity. Every time something goes bad, people blame God for it. It wasn't God that was doing it. It was some other reason for it. Okay? As soon as you start blaming God for something that's wrong in your life, that's when your blessings stop. That's when your miracle ends. God's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help. He had already told Sarah and Abraham she was going to have a child. Her soul now got her in trouble, didn't it? Go into my maid. So I may obtain children by her. She's now panicking emotionally. And she is hedging Jehovah. She's helping Jehovah just in case he screws up and doesn't come through. Oh, now he's a, she's a real American Christian. Because American Christians are control freaks. They want to do it themselves because they don't have any faith that God will do. So she steps in and does it herself. I'm going to fix my kids. I'm going to fix my own health. I'm going to go to all the doctors. I'm going to do this for my son. They, Christians, try to take control on their own. Once they do that, click, the miracle shut off. And Jehovah stands and watches the Christian do their best as they continue to screw up. The marriage gets worse. The fam kids get worse. The finances get worse. The health get worse. Why? Because they don't trust God. So they got to do it themselves. Well, you take one look at take one look at that Egyptian gal, and she didn't have to tell him twice. <laughs> so he makes her his wife. Okay. And in that society, you had the main wife, then you had the subservient wives and the concubines. There was a pecking order in families back then. Kind of like Mormons now. In Mesa, they don't have legal wives, they have ceremonial wives. So the guys over in Mesa have a wife, a legal wife, and then they have these other wives. But they're not legal wives. As polygamy is illegal here. That'll change. Get a radio show on it. But anyway, right now, anyway, it's illegal. So she gave, she did it. She did it. Why? She had the soul problem. She had the fear in the soul. She was worried about her future. She was worried about her children. She was scared. Three visitors later on, as you know, come to visit Abraham on the way to go checking out Lot. What was that all about? Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, Abraham sees them and runs out and grabs them and brings them home for a buffet meal. While they're sitting there, Yahweh asks Abraham, where's your wife? Now notice he ha he had more than one wife. No, he meant the main wife. You got your main wife here, and the other wives, and you got concubines. It's a little reversed here in America. In my house, we've got wife here, then I've got me here, and I've got other things down here, whatever that is, a pickup. Anyway, and it's dented. Well, he says, well, she's in the tent. He says, well, listen. Jehovah says, I will certainly. And every time you read any red ink in your Bible, it's a certainty. It's the divine certainty. Of a certainty, I will return to you according to the time of life. You don't understand this. You don't know, but you have a time of life reserved for you. Can only believe for it. And then Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Period. This thing's etched in divine stone. Sarah was listening. Okay. And she hears him say it. What does she do? Oh boy. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well stricken in years. And Sarah couldn't have any more children. Correct? 
translation, her womb on the right had turned into this prune. Now I'm no gynecologist, but when this goes prunish, you ain't having any kids. I even know that. But God speaks things that are not as though they were. Sarah did what? She laughed. Now what kind of laugh was that? One the kind you get at the comedy shop? No. This was one of those personal laughs where <laughs> God, I wish that could happen to me. Right. That some have you ever had somebody say something so so spectacular to you that it seems so far away you just giggle. Well, I can't wish that would happen. Jehovah heard her. And what you don't understand is when you say something that's a negative, or you speak out a fear statement out of the soul, it's heard in the spirit world. It's heard in the spirit world. Your doubt is heard in the spirit world. And somebody takes that doubt and applies it right to your life. They apply it to the things your soul is worried about. That's why your kids get sicker. That's why your finances get worse. Because you said something and somebody in the spirit world heard it. God heard it. He said, hey. Why did Sarah laugh? He's asking Abraham that. Not Sarah. She's hiding in the tent. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Translation, your heavenly father speaks things that couldn't possibly happen as though they've already happened. She says, what? At the appointed time, you have one. You have one time. That's right. Yes, sir. 22 something years ago, uh, my daughter got in a car accident. She was brain dead at John C. Lingen Hospital up here in Sunny Snow. And the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart years later and said, She's going to be restored. Now I had two options there. I could go with Sarah, or I could keep on believing. Let me tell you something. After 22 years of believing for something, that's tough. Most Christians can't go 22 hours without backsliding. Was it hard? Oh, of course it's hard. Has it been a struggle? And there are times that have gone bad. Absolutely. I'm just a regular person like everybody else. But when you read this story, you keep on believing. Right. At the appointed time, my daughter, at the appointed time, you right. are going to be completely healed. You are going to find your destiny. At the appointed time, I will return. And your wife will have a son. This was after she laughed. Why? The contract, God's promises, were with him, not Sarah. What? Yes, sir. God promises the mother or the dad something about the kids. It's going to happen whether the kids like it or not. Why? The promise was to the parents, not the child. <coughs> well, that was it for Sarah, man. She'd been at the tent. Go and listen. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> if you've ever been married and see your wife go, what? And then this little skip, you in trouble. <laughs> you in bad trouble. Your life will instantaneously start to suck. <laughs> she comes bolting out the tent. Yahweh, the eternal God, says to her now. Yeah. Yeah, we heard you laugh. See, when you say something, or even if you whisper it, and it's negative, I can say that. Oh, yes, you did. Somebody in the spirit world heard you. 
you said it and it was picked up in the spirit world And when you keep saying those negative things and things of unbelief and doubt and worry and fear those things come upon you like job the thing I feared most has come upon me Why it's picked up in the spirit world and then hell comes to your house Try it like Abraham just keep on believing Then that comes to your house Huh? See, you understand, before this promise popped in, Abraham was celibate. <laughs> That's right. Come on, guys, let's just praise. Let's let's get some. This is emotional and psychological here. Men, men don't like to be celibate. No, they don't. They have something in their body, kind of a plague. It's called testosterone. You ever heard of that? It's a medical term. I'm getting a little deep on some of you. Abraham was an honorable man. He wasn't going to the Playboy Mansion every week. No. He was celibate. You see, your finances are celibate right now. Your health sucks. It's celibate right now. But let me tell you something. At the appointed time, when Jehovah comes to visit you, you're going to be like Abraham. Hi. American Jiggler. <laughs> he went from celibacy to wow. Having kids like a popcorn machine. <laughs> hey, God. Oh, God, the soul is the seat of the emotions. That's what the devil wants to hook into and drag you around by your emotions so you can live a defeated, useless, failure-oriented Christian life. Every Christian who lives by their soul fails 100%. Hagar, oh, no, sweetie. Abraham went into Hagar, no kidding. She conceived. What's that tell you? This guy was a pretty, you know, well-to-do 86-year-old. This is a bad confession to make, but I do have some fears about myself at 86. <laughs> I don't think I want to be able to keep up with this guy. But anyway, check this out. The Egyptian hottie, bang, there she gets pregnant. Well, when Sarah saw she was pregnant, what happened? Oh, no. She, she jumped the gun on God. When you jump the gun on God, you're headed for some bad times. At the moment you're doing it, it gives you a sensation of emotional release. Hey, I fixed it. I did it myself. I think it's, yeah, that should work out. But as it sets in, over time, you made an emotional decision, and now you start to regret it. So Sarah does what? Oh, nobody married here. <coughs> Wives don't like to be wrong. And... If you happen to be in the geographic vicinity of a wife who found out she was wrong but doesn't want to be wrong, you become a target. Hey, Abraham, I gave you, hottie. It's your fault. It's your fault. Now, because of her emotions and her soul, this whole thing got totally distorted. He got her pregnant, so the demons told her, Hey, you're fine. It's his fault. She now blames it on him. Anytime you make an emotional decision, later on you see it goes bad on you, you always look for someone else to blame. Yes. 
you don't want to face it you don't want it dumped on you you've got to find a patsy in this case it was who Abraham Abraham then said Hagar where he came you what does she do she runs because Sarah is now abusing her she runs for her life suddenly Jehovah runs her down why because the baby was Abraham's the contract the promise was Abraham's not Sarah's Jehovah runs her down because the baby is his Once you get a promise from God, that promise is yours. And if you continue to believe, the gates of hell can't steal it from you. Because he promised you. Hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? What's happening? I'm running away from Sarah. She's, she's treating me like garbage. The angel of the Lord said, and that means what? Yeah, anytime you see that phrase, that's Jehovah. God said, go back to your mistress and submit yourself under her hands. That doesn't seem like good advice. <laughs> Temporarily, it wasn't good advice. The Holy Ghost sees the beginning from the end all at the same moment. Long term was tremendous advice because that was Abraham's son. Go submit yourself and go back to her, and I will multiply your seed exceedingly. There'll be so many of them, you won't even be able to count them. Okay? Now, this is an Egyptian. She's not even, she's not even in the his family. She's a she's a, a maid, so to speak. She's almost like hired help in the beginning. She was like property. Sarah gave her to Abraham. Here's God telling an Egyptian girl because of his promise to the father, hey, you're gonna have to there are going to be so many kids, you're not even going to believe it. The angel of the Lord Jehovah said, I will multiply your seed exceedingly. You won't even be able to count on Genesis 16. You are with child and shall bear a son, and you are to name him the one whom God hears. What did God hear? He heard her prayer. Now he's given her a promise because of his relationship with Abraham. Now Hagar's got the promise, and it's going to happen whether there was an Abraham or not. As soon as you get the promise, the gates of hell can't steal it from you. It can't be removed. The one whom God hears is what Ishmael name means. And the Lord has heard your affliction. Let me tell you a little bit about this son. Wow, what a prophecy this was. He will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. Every man's hand against him. Ooh. He will dwell in the presence of all of his brethren. What happened to Ishmael? What an interesting story this is. He lived to be 137. I'm not going to make it. He went to Northwest Arabia. Those were of Bedouin tribes in the Bible. They are the what? Modern day Muslims. And boy, are they wild. Hagar gave him what? 
an Egyptian wife idol worship. She was an idol worship. This is an amazing story about the promises of God and how powerful they are. Hagar had all kinds of flaws. She was an Egyptian. She came from an idol worshiping background. They were not worshipers of Yahweh, the great God of the universe. But because of Abraham, he heard her prayer and in spite of omnisciently knowing this was a bad decision on Sarah's part. You see, Ish Ishmael was never part of the equation. Jehovah had no intention of Ishmael ever showing up. Yeah, does that ring a bell? He had no intention of there ever being an Ishmael. What happened there? Sarah screwed up. That's a wonderful story. Why? Because I'm talking to you. You know what you are? No offense. A certified screw up. You want to hear some good news? God will bless you anyway. You didn't hear me. Don't raise your hand if you're a certified screw up. Just keep it down. It's between you and I. Let me tell you something. When you make a mistake, that does not take you out of the running for God's Amen. miracles. Amen. Hey, Sarah screwed up. And she screwed up bad. And she paid a terrible price for it. We, to this day, have paid a terrible price for it. Muslims, Allah, terrorism, ISIS, all of it. None of that stopped God from fulfilling his promises. To Abraham <coughs> don't you can't you see it can't don't you get it when God makes a promise no matter what happens as a result good or bad he keeps it now he knew omnisciently that was all going to go bad didn't he he can see in the future can he not it doesn't affect his present He and Abraham had an agreement. That was Abraham's son. Jehovah honored it and gave that boy 137 years. And an entire civilization came out of his loins. The number one group of people killed at Armageddon are what? Muslims. The Battle of Armageddon is the elimination of Islam. This mistake of Sarah's had worldwide consequences, which will be rectified at Armageddon. Which is pretty close. Yes, sir. Not tomorrow, but I mean, we're a few years away and this thing's going to go down. Ishmael had 12 sons and one daughter. Oh, here we go. When you live out of your soul, you cannot be a disciple of God. It's not possible. You can't live out of your emotions and be a disciple of Christ. It's not possible. It doesn't work. Disciples operate out of their spirit man, not their soul. They're not robots. Of course they have feelings. But the dominant power is the spirit over the soul. In a carnal Christian, which is 98% of them, the soul is the dominant force within the person. How they feel determines what they do, what they believe, what they say. If you will repent of that and change, you're staring at a lifetime of miracles. Check it out. Samson, Samson's soul was different than Sarah's. She operated out of fear. See, he operated out of, out of passion. Samson was 
Superman. <laughs> Superman. I mean, NFL players, if they met him, would go, oh my God. Unbelievable. That guy's that's a that's a man. That's a real man. Well, Samson was not only a real man here, he was a real man here. Ooh, this poor guy was sick. He had uncontrollable passions and sexual desire. Today, in my counseling practice, we call them sex addicts. Back then, no one had that term. Samson's passions come out of your soul. Lived out of them. Is that good or bad? Well, it's just like you and I. It's good here, it's bad here. Okay? When Samson had to demolish a couple of hundred Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Hey, Samson, go ahead and use your soul, buddy. Yes, sir. I love your soul. Get mad. Right. He was the defender of Israel, the judge of Israel. He took the jawbone of an ass. Can you imagine that? Huh? You know what it is. It's similar to an in law. He picked that thing up and Thousand died at one side, ten thousand died at the other. These were battle hardened soldiers he killed. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. When the Spirit of the Lord left him, a sixth grader could have whipped him. <laughs> You're exactly like Samson. If you stay in the Spirit, you are a monster in the Spirit world. You step into the carnal world of the soul. You can't pray your way out of a wet paper bag. You are a spiritual loser. Well, Samson comes home. What does Samson mean? He was like the sun. Uh, every time he showed up, boom, it was like this bright ray of sunshine. There's Samson, my God. He's the savior of Israel. He goes down to Timnah, which apparently was similar to Las Vegas. At least, at least Reno, and he saw a woman of the daughter of the Philistines. They were similar to the Egyptians, hot babes. He comes home. He says to his mom and dad, "Hey, I saw this hot babe. Philistines. Know what I mean, Dad? Yeah, I know what you mean, son. Now I want you to do me a favor, Dad. Go get her for me." I didn't do that with my wife. <laughs> Unfortunately, I picked them out myself. But then his father and mother said, Samson, come on, man. Can't you pick a Jehovah, God fearing, Jehovah worshiping woman of the law? Can't you pick someone that God would be pleased? Why do you have to go after? Hussies and whores and slutty type women. Why do you have to do that? Why don't you get a godly woman? What, what's he doing there? He's acting just like you. That's right. Yeah. You got any young kids? You're going to be having this conversation someday. She's going to bring home a guy. Oh boy. Yes, sir. You're going to have dinner with him. Why don't you have something to eat, Bill? Uh, don't mind if I do. Loudy, sloppy stuff on the floor, dripping it all over. Bag of pot falls out of his. Honey, why can't you find a somebody in pre med? Well, why do you got to go for? What, oh, he's on the football team, is he? Oh, that's great. He can't spell cat without spotting the C and the A. He's on the football team. Can't, honey, why can't you? You know, they they got a lot med school over there at the college. Why don't you find somebody in pre med, honey? You'll be doing it. You'll be doing it. You got young kids, let me tell you. Every parent goes through it. About 90% of us. They're looking like, oh, God. I shouldn't reveal this now. It's embarrassing, but years ago, like 20 something. My oldest daughter got married. And she was uh, 
to see she had been about um, Without wasting a lot of time. Let's say around 20 something like that She was in college and she had left us here and went to Washington and Got a job as a server met a guy there working at the restaurant and As your dad as a dad we're different than mothers. We're, we're the last person to get any information. When the information is disseminated, they go down the list. Notify, 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 notify. Dad. <laughs> I don't know anything about what's going on, but all of a sudden I find out there's going to be a wedding. Oh, in Tahoe. Wedding in Tahoe. Oh, I can't wait. You know. Several thoughts racing through my mind. Oh, let's see. What kind of drugs am I going to be on when I get? Ooh, I got to. This is. Oh my God. What's it? Why well, get the Tahoe? And I meet the groom to be. Ooh. Have you ever had the shakes? Nobody. Yeah. Have you ever had a sudden urge for diarrhea? <laughs> He's twelve years older than her. Uh. Super smart, short, uh, had spent years traveling the country, uh, smoking pot. Had decided to settle his life down. And my daughter was, geez, just, she was gorgeous. She had a beautiful body with long blonde hair, good sense of humor. Not as, as, not as intelligent as him, but reasonably bright. And he took a look at her and goes, wow, Hagar. <laughs> well, after the initial shock wore off, it was time for the wedding. Everybody goes into the little chapel there at the casino place. And I'm standing out here in the hall, and there's my daughter here, because i got to walk my daughter down the aisle. And, you know, I'm getting... <laughs> Things are shaking, and I'm I'm looking at her there. And I, if I look at her too long, I started cry, I started crying. So I had to look over here, and uh, she's she's quiet. She's not saying anything. You know, it's so, uh, awkward. I got the thing here. I'm walking down the aisle, and I can't hold it anymore. I am weeping like a guy going to the gallows. <laughs> Florence. I can't stop crying. The groom's family's on this side. They're, they're all looking at me. Everybody's staring at me. In the whole chapel, everybody's staring at me. All the relatives, all the visitors. They're all looking at me. What's wrong with him? So you got diarrhea? <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? So you got crabs? What's wrong with him? You got a hemorrhoid? What's wrong with that guy? Well, I'm, I'm giving my daughter away okay, to that guy. <laughs> I hand her off. I stagger to the front seat in the my ex-wife sitting there, her mother, sit right there. I was weeping so bad, my ex-wife, who can't stand me. Reaches over and starts patting me to comfort me. <laughs> when your ex-wife will hit your guts, is patting you to comfort me. You've been crying. I bet. Trust me on that one. Just take it. I cried all through the ceremony. All the way through. Couldn't stop. Ran to the bathroom after the sermon. Boom. Oh. Oh. Gasping for breath. Gasping. Hyperventilating. I was having a Samson's dad moment. Samson's son, why can't you? Why, why, why are you burying that guy? Honey, I couldn't say it to I couldn't even speak to us. So shake it. And, and of course, it went just like I knew it was going to be. It went bad. Except for the grandkids. They were guests. Incredible. Incredible grandkids. Jehovah saved me. 
son, Samson, dude, come on. Use some common sense. What about Jehovah? Think straight, son. I didn't teach you that. Look, I married your mother. Look at her. She's, she's one of the group. She's a believer. Look, I married her. Look at me, boy. <laughs> Samson, I'll go down and get her for me. See, when you're living out of your soul and your emotions or passions take over, you don't think straight. Ah, duh. Oh, that's deep. Why are you taking an uncircumcised Philistine? What's he said? That wasn't a physical thing. That was a spiritual thing. There was a contract with the circumcision. That was Yahweh, the great God of the universe. It wasn't some idol over the Philistine, Dagon, or some false god who can't do anything. This was Jehovah, the king of the universe. The real God. Why can't you find a woman? What did he do? He spoke out of his soul. When your emotions dominate you, you are headed for the iceberg and you are on the Titanic. You will go down. That's right. That's right. She pleases me. What? Load this thing. She pleases you. Think beyond your senses. Think beyond your carnality. Think beyond your lust. Dude! Come on, man! Nope. No, he was an American Christian. If I feel like doing it, I don't give a rat's fanny what God thinks. I'm going to do it myself. But first I'll rationalize it, which will allow me to do it, but I'm still going to do it. What happened to that story? Huh? Yeah, the honeydew parable. Remember that one? Anybody remember the rest of that story? Yeah. Yeah, that marriage didn't go well, did it? She she betrayed him. She gave up the riddle. You did. My daughter's husband cheated on her. Marriage. Boom. Hello? Is anybody? Is this thing on? I'm trying to show you. What it's like for a Christian to live out of their emotions. And if you do, you will fail. Like Samson. Fail. Samson never learned his lesson on the first Philistine wife. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no I'm not going to learn anything. Typical American Christian. They repeat the same sin over and over again, fulfilling the definition of insanity, which is? Bingo. Samson was, by Einstein's definition, insane. He loved another woman. Her name was Delilah. What happened to Delilah? Yeah. Yeah. As you continue to live out of your emotions, the first wife isn't as bad as the second one. As you continue to live out of your emotions and you begin to live by feelings, your feelings will continue to get worse and more perverted over the years. And your situation will continue to worsen and the depressions and the fears and the loneliness go like this. They accelerate. What happened to poor Samson? Had trouble seeing when that was over. Oh God, you don't get it, do you? Living out of your emotions will blind you to the things of God. Samson lost his life. He lost his judgeship. He was the judge of Israel. He's the most physically powerful human being ever lived. He would have won world's strongest man now every single year. They would have canceled the show out of boredom. boredom. Cancel the show. He wins every year. The ratings plummeting. Let's move forward to the New Testament. 
take a couple of short stops here and then we'll be done Philippians chapter 1 Paul the most anointed Christian that ever lived greatest Christian ever lived. here he is he says salute Ephesus my fellow prisoner in Christ Marcus Aristarchus and who Demas what does that word mean in Greek the, the one who governs people Lucas and my they are my fellow laborers Demas and Paul the greatest Christian ever were fellow laborers why was Paul so incredibly great he saw himself as an equal with the other sons and daughters of God he didn't have that TV preacher complex where your arrogance your ego flares up while you're driving around in a limo and moving over to a mansion that's all satanic arrogance Paul far greater Christian than any of these frauds on TV saw himself as an equal to you to you to you fellow laborer did you hear that not my assistant laborer a fellow laborer that is greatness And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your oh listen if you could repent of this today and grasp this teaching you'll become a different person within days your spirit man is your goal not your soul do I want to become a Android or a cyborg of course not everybody has emotions but the disciple keeps them under control the Christian loses control of their emotions and says or does something they shouldn't do Colossians chapter 4 check it out Luke the beloved physician and Demas he's still with him this Demas must have been a powerful man of God think about it for a second Some Christians, a small percent of them, or a certain percent, like to hang around successful ministers who move in the Spirit. And that's one of the reasons traveling faith healers and so on have such big crowds. Because the bottom line is everybody wants a piece of the Holy Ghost. When he's around, people flock over there to check it out. Because the bottom line really is people want the Holy Ghost over everything else. Deep inside your soul and your spirit, there's a craving for him. He's the gateway to God. Demas was no different. Only this time he's hanging around the most anointed Christian that ever took a breath on this planet. Not some guy on TV. He was at the top. Can you imagine? Think about it for a second. What kind of miracles did Demas see? My God. What happened? Walking along the street and your shadow passes over a bunch of quadriplegics. They get up and start running. Paul goes around tapping blind people. They're all healed. What? Demas was standing right there watching it. He had an Academy Award winning front row seat for the most spectacular Holy Ghost show ever seen. Kid falls out of a window. Breaks his neck. He's dead. Paul goes over. Resurrects him. Demas saw everything. All of it. What didn't he see? I really don't know. I can't imagine. He, Paul must have seen every every miracle in the book. Had to have. My goodness. The demons even know. The Skiva guys come running and say, hey, we're going to cast the demon out. And the demon goes, hey, whoa, time out here. <laughs> now, I, I've seen Jesus. I know who he is personally. And I've heard about Paul. Uh, 
who in the gates of hell are you? They knew who he was. It's not like that around here. I mean, when people come in with demons, the demons go, who are you? I said, well, wait a minute. I'll have Kelly tell you. <laughs> Kelly comes in, introduces me to the demons, then we get to work. They knew who Paul was. You don't get it, do you? Every single healing you ever dreamed of seeing, demons saw it. He saw it. He, he was part of it. And this guy was a fortunate person, believe it or not. Correct? I mean, in my eyes, anyway. First Timothy 4, Paul said, Do your due diligence to come to me shortly. Why is that? Well, Paul's ministry was collapsing, okay? Why? If you have this many Christians and things go bad, you suddenly have this many. I, you didn't hear me. If things start to go bad on a Christian, oh, the numbers dwindle instantaneously, practically. Over time, they drift out like rats swimming from a sinking ship. They're gone. It's happening to Paul. They're starting. To, the devil's peeling off his support. The devil thinks Christians don't. He knows if you don't have a certain amount of support, you'll collapse. You'll go crazy. Well, he's peeling Paul off, so he says, "Hey, bring these to me shortly." For Demas, my right hand man, my fellow laborer, Demas, Demas. And Catalipo deserted me. What? He saw every miracle of the book. He was ministering with the most powerful Christian that ever lived, and he deserted him. Why? What happened? Why? Listen to me carefully. No matter who you are, or no matter who you think you are, you are capable of falling by listening to the emotions in your soul. You may be down at the altar. Speaking in tongues and prophesying and having the greatest Holy Ghost time you've ever had. That person is capable of falling later if they don't control their emotions. You want to be a Christian? You want to be a servant of God? Do you? Do you? Do you? Check it out. You're going to have adversity. And there is no way to get out of it. When you have adversity, if you receive it emotionally, you will fail. Demas saw every miracle in the book. What happened? Agapao. He fell back in love with worldly things. Where'd that love come from? Out of a spirit man for God? No! Comes out of the soul. Can you imagine? Demas himself had to have a spectacular anointing. It wouldn't surprise me. He probably helped out in the services. What did he do? He fell in love. Agapao is the Greek verb, verb for agape. It means to get your love, to express your love, to give your love. He gave his love in his soul to carnal things. Hey, Paul, let me talk to you for a minute. Hey, buddy, this prison thing and uh, persecution and Jews chasing us from the gates of hell to the gates of heaven, threatening our lives, cursing us everywhere we go. You know what? I've been thinking a bit. Uh, I'm still kind of starting to miss my old job and my family, you know, and my wife and uh, my uh, pet goat. Uh, you see, all the devil's got to do to a Christian is turn the heat up on them and they'll collapse like you can't believe. Why? Because they switch over from their spirit man to their soul man. And as soon as their emotions take over, there goes the marriage, there goes the money, there goes the job, there goes the help, there goes everything. He left, deserted me. He left, went back to Thessalonica. 
look at these other guys Crescians Which means growing went to Galatia Titus which means honorable or honorable one Maria only Luke is with me the light giver What's that saying there? The two that went on to ministry, that was fine with Paul. But when somebody leaves to go serve God, there's a gap here with you now. Okay? So now you need the Holy Spirit to send somebody to fill that gap. See? As Rocky said, hey, we got gaps. She fills gaps, I got gaps. Together we got gaps. <laughs> well, when somebody leaves your ministry, you got a gap there. It needs to be filled. Demas betrayed him. Who? Oh man, Alexander. Acts 19. They drew Alexander, which means helper of men, out of the multitude, and the Jews putting him forward. What happened there? Well, Paul had cast a demon out of a girl who was a fortune teller, a soothsayer, the Greek word meant to him, it means someone who can predict the future. So these men had taken this young girl. Like a slave traders, and they made her work for them. So they used her to tell fortunes, and they took the money. That's what they do in the sex trades. They make this kid sleep with that guy, then they take the money. Same thing here, only it was spiritual. And Paul got in trouble because she couldn't tell fortunes anymore because that demon that was predicting the future for everybody blew out of her head. And it was the demon's fault. Yeah, see, demons are not omniscient. They don't know everything. They make mistakes like human beings do. They make mistakes. They had this girl following Paul, yelling at him. And they told her, the demon in his mind was thinking, it was a familiar spirit. He said, well, I think I can get away with this by having her say positive things to him. Positive. See? The devil loves to say positive things to you. Oh, you're heavily anointed. Oh, your future's bright. Oh, you're called to Ghana. Oh, they give you all kinds of good stuff. You're spiritually killing it. Oh, you're a monster spiritually. As soon as that starts up, the exact opposite is true. You're actually a spiritual idiot and don't know it. Well, she's yelling at Paul. He's He tells us about Jehovah, the great God. He, he leads us a God. He tells us all about truth. Well, Paul had enough of it. He turns around to the demon. It was the demon's fault. Had he shut his mouth and not followed Paul around, he, he, they would have kept that girl. But he overplayed his hand, as they say in poker, and boom, he blows out. Well, that did it to Paul. There's riots. And guess who saved Paul's life? Listen, God used Alexander to save Paul's life. They wanted to string him up. They took him instead. Well, you're not listening. You got to understand something. If you're going to be a servant of the Lord and you want to be a disciple, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Not the guy on TV. Alexander tries to calm the mob down. He says, hey, I want to talk to you for a minute. He wanted to make a defense that, hey, we weren't trashing. Diana, the great god of the Ephesians. We didn't say one bad thing about her. Okay? This thing got blown out of proportion. Listen. Demons don't like to listen to reason. That's deep. Guess what happened? Hey, this guy's a Jew. All of everything went nuts. Two solid hours. Two solid hours. Half the half the time of that Avenger movie. Did you see that Avenger movie? That thing was horrible. I went to the three dollar theater up on Bell and I seventeen. I was bored in tears one day. I'm looking at the movies there. They're all they're all way past their prime. I looked at that one. Oh, well, I'll try that. Click. I made the mistake of bringing my wife with me. <laughs> She's not here, is she? 
It's good. Let's put it this way. <clears throat> she didn't like that movie. I didn't like it either. That thing went like four or five hours. It was awful. Well, this it was almost as bad as this. They were neck and neck. They're having a riot over Diana. And Alexander is the one they drag up there. But God saves him. And they don't kill him. As a servant of the Lord, you got to understand something. You don't know whether you're going to get saved or not. Your job is only to serve. You might get saved or you might not. A disciple doesn't care. They're in it for the long term. A Christian wants conditions on it. Really? Now, wait a minute. What's going to happen if this happens? What about that? What are we going to do when that happens? How is this going to happen? They don't have any faith at all. They want everything covered before they make a move. That's the Christian. Well, Alexander got saved, right? Alexander must have been just like Demas. He saw all the miracles, all the healings, all the persecution, all the preaching, all the teaching. Could Paul teach? My God, unbelievable. The depth and knowledge of supernatural things that Paul had was unlike any other, any other disciple. John was close. The revelations were spectacular. Demas heard them all. He saw them all. Alexander heard them all. He saw them all. First Timothy chapter 1. Holding your faith, pistis, that's a Greek word for faith in a Christian, and a good conscience, which some having, apple fail, pushed off, pushed out, pushed away. Concerning pistis, faith, and they have shipwrecked their faith. Who did that? Alexander did it. What happened to him? Paradidomi means to surrender something to somebody. Give me that. 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 Give that to me. Give that to me. Okay. Here. It doesn't mean you can't take it over. You know what? I don't want this. Here, take it. No. It's, give me that, give me that, give me it. Satan wanted those two guys. Give me them, give me them. He got them. And Paul stopped praying for them. And surrendered them to the monster. Why? Hey, they need to learn. Listen, you're going to have some trials you're going to have to go through. And if you have to beg your way out of them, you're not learning anything begging. Begging your way out of a trial means A, you're a coward, or B, you have no faith. C, both. Why did he do that? Why did he let them go? He had them, praying for them, helped them, healed them, delivered them. Okay. What happened there? Listen, bad things happen for good reason. Why? God wants to get your attention. And since you haven't been listening to him, he, to him, he allows bad things to happen to, hello, hey, I'm over here. Look over here. Listen over here. That's why you should count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations because it's God calling. What? This is insane teaching. Mike's nuts. Bad things can be the best friend you've ever had. Bad things happening to you causes you to look over that way. Causes you to refocus. Causes you to eliminate distractions. Suddenly you're focused here, which is where Father wanted you to look. If everything goes good for you all the time, you're doomed. Is he nuts? Mike's crazy. Second Timothy 2. Shun! Peristomy, what does that mean? Don't hang around 
people who say and teach and talk like idiots Bag them Hey listen uh, the, the, the tribulation already happened and there's two Holy Spirits and and uh, Excuse me a minute You see the scripture you see what it's saying it didn't tell me to ream the guy out it said Leave don't hang around these people Shun I'm out Profane and vain babblings Why of course they increase the more godliness arguing strife bitterness for their word will eat like a Gangrene what is that? What's the English word? Gangrene correct what is gangrene? It's a per progressive illness. It starts out there, then it starts creeping. It's creepy. That's a medical term. Of whom is who? Yes, sir. There he is again. Right there. Same guy. Famous. It means things that belong or pertain to marriage. That's what his name means. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past already, and overthrowing the pistis, that means God faith, of some. Can you imagine that? In our society, we only have pre tribs, mid tribs, and post tribs. Back then, they had past tribs, pre tribs, mid tribs, and post tribs. By the time you got through as a born again Christian, Studying those and arguing about them and fighting over, you were backslidden. Translation, they were causing people to lose their faith because they said, Oh no, the the no no, the, the rapture already happened. You missed it. So they so they start living out of their emotions. All of a sudden, instead of their spirit man, it's the soul. They tank. Every time you live out your emotions, every time you focus on your emotions and they get out of control, you will tank. That is why God causes your children to act like idiots. That is why God allows the goof at work to jump all over you with a bag of total nonsense. Why is that? God's trying to teach you to play it cool. In your spirit, man. I got this guy covered. The idiot at work is covered by the Holy Ghost. Your kooky spouse is covered by the Holy Ghost. That's right. I know you don't believe it. That's true. That's why God allows adversity to come at you. He's trying to illuminate problems in your soul. That need to be fixed. We call it inner healing around here. Nevertheless, Second Timothy two, the foundation of God stands sure. Listen, it doesn't matter how many of these people are lying or how many false doctrines come out of this group. What God's holy word is never shaken. No matter what Sarah did, no matter what Hagar did, no matter what Ismail did. All of them were a bunch of screw-ups. God's promises to Abraham never shook for a second. Your whole world may be filled with complete psychos. You hang on to God's word, it will never shake, not even for a moment. It says here, the foundation of God stands sure. What's that saying? They're out teaching false doctrines, but God's word is solid, has a seal of the Holy Ghost on it. The Lord Gnosko understands those who are his. So let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Why? Iniquity always starts 
in the soul It's not going to start in the spirit man. That's where the Holy Spirit is. That's where your fruit is. That's where your gifts are Iniquity bitterness strife lust confusion worry fear always starts in the soul It's emotional Emotions that are not under control of the spirit Let's conclude brethren Count it all. What? This guy must be nuts. No, he had a deep spiritual understanding that he had learned through a series of trials. Huh? James had been tested. Parasmus, what does that mean? To test you. Trials, temptations are testings designed to help you overcome. So you can grow stronger spiritually God does not allow temptations or trials to come upon your life because He's like my neighbor Johnny Webb When I was in second grade Johnny Webb was in kindergarten He would come down to our house Yes, sir in Kankakee, Illinois. I was in second grade. Johnny Webb always had matches on him. Where did, where did he get the matches? I have no idea. He always had a magnifying glass in his pocket. Johnny Johnny Webb's his name. He's probably dead or in prison, but he would come to my house. And he would say, hey, Mike, Mike, come on out here. I go, God, Johnny Webb's here. My mom would go on, talk to him. Be nice to him. Well, thanks, Mom. <laughs> He's got a bug on the pavement and a, microf a magnifying glass here. Hey, Mike, this is funny. He's cooking the bugs. Thinks it's funny. No, hey, I had nothing against bugs. At that age now to be honest with you. I'm not that interested in it But watching a bug cook on the cement like that kind of bothered me. I don't know why it seemed cruel when I was younger I had my mother's emotion The guy goes into my closet Sets him up a little campfire <laughs> my mother goes, Mike, what's it? What's that smell? And Johnny, I, he just went to, went to the bathroom. Well, Johnny had gone in the bathroom, boop, made a detour out of the bathroom into my closet in my bedroom. Yes, sir. Johnny Kindergartner, a certified bona fide pyromaniac. I know, I know he was on TV years later. Had to have been. America's most wanted. I'm sure he was on. Positive of it. Uh, listen, stupid people come in your life for a reason. Now you might see no rationale to it, but the Holy Ghost is on it. He's watching it. He's watching how you're reacting to that person. He's watching your behavior. He's watching how you think. And he's assessing how you're handling that situation. Are you handling it from your spirit, man? With joy unspeakable and full of Or are you handling it from your soul, like I did with Johnny Webb, running in the back bedroom? What are you doing? My mother called his mom. Johnny just lit the house on fire. Is he doing that again? Talk on it. You <laughs> can't believe that. I told him no. Go, Johnny. Ginosko, understanding that the trying testing of your pistis, God faith, works endurance. Hupomone, endurance. Christians don't have any endurance. They collapse at the drop of a hat. Disciples can tough it out. Knowing that what they're going through is leading them to higher ground spiritually.
the prosperity crap on TV. It's all satanic. Life ain't a bed of roses. And thank God it's not. Because without adversity and testing and trials, you and I would never grow. We would become spoiled. Have you ever met any, every, anybody at all where everything went right all the time? You ever been raised around? Met a kid who was spoiled? Don't they make me sick? Oh, God, you get a screw and you gag yourself. <laughs> they expect stuff. They feel entitled to stuff. God, man of faith and power, is a servant and doesn't feel entitled to anything. They know they were saved by grace and faith. Spoiled people make hellish Christians. Endurance is what you need. So let endurance have her teleos, full or complete work. What's God telling you there? Listen, some tough times started here. I mentioned my daughter. That was 22 years ago. Hey, things are tougher now, 22 years later, than they were 22 years ago. Why? Her mother's older. I know I don't look it, but I am older. <laughs> we are more tired. Uh, she has gained a couple pounds. She's heavier. Okay, so point, what's the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is your Christian life is a marathon, not a sprint. And you have to let the trials and testings run their course so they will tell us come to completion. You have to let them be completed. If you abort or run or quit or give up, you've lost your opportunity to grow and to learn. Why? So that you may be, tell us, complete and entire. Alacrus, perfect, perfectly sound. Well, Brother Mike, I go to church and I read the Bible. Okay, that's good. But that's not going to make you a disciple. Oh, you didn't hear me. You heard me say that. You thought it was blasphemy. You're about to let me go. To the devil. No, friend, reading the Bible and praying and all this, those are all good things to do and you have to do them. That will not make you a disciple. You're not listening. Overcoming makes you a disciple. The trying of your faith makes you a disciple. Learning to prevail and developing endurance in adversity makes you a disciple. No one ever became a disciple without it. Jesus had chronic adversity in his life. What he was the son of God, everything went perfect. You haven't read the four gospels, let me tell you that. You haven't read anything about them. You got to be kidding. Why is this being done for you? God wants you to stop living out of your emotions and live out of your spirit, man. Why? So you can leave your Christianity behind and become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to dump powerful gifts into your spirit, man. He wants you to become a Samson spiritually without the soul issue. Samson could have judged Israel for a hundred years. The guy was a physical monster. Nobody could take him. Period. He could have even whipped Hercules. <laughs> yeah, that was my own joke there. How do I do it? Here's what you got to do. You got to learn to be a disciple. All disciples are marathon runners. They are long distance runners. Well, wait a minute. I can't do that. I don't want. Well, yes, you can. Now, listen up. Listen up for a second. Okay, here's how you start. You're fat, you're inexperienced, and you're out of shape. Every Christian fits that bill. You have to start at the starting line. 
it takes time to learn to run in the Boston Marathon. You don't wake up on Tuesday and go, you know something? Oh, jeez, what do I got to do today? You know what? I got I got a couple hours to spare. I think I'll run the Boston Marathon today. Oh, what are you nuts? You wouldn't make you wouldn't make it a half a mile. You have to learn through endurance, through training, through dedication, by pushing yourself, by watching your diet, by training appropriately to be able to work your way up to the Boston Marathon. Nobody starts out at the Boston Marathon. Last week, it doesn't happen. Everybody starts like that. You put on your outfit, and it don't look too good because you're out of shape. And your family that used to be up here has drooped down there. Now, you got the flappers and the droopers. You don't become a disciple overnight. Nobody does. Nobody's better than you. Nobody's better than you. You are the same as everybody else. We're all the same. We all face trials and temptations. We all have to grow like that. It's not easy becoming a disciple. you got to learn. Okay, how'd you do today? I made it three blocks. Oh, that's excellent. Good. Okay, you made it three. The Holy Ghost goes, you've done real good. That's great. Good. How'd you do in your diet? Oh, I cut this and that. Oh, that Holy Ghost. Yeah, you're doing great. I got, I got nothing but patience for you. I'm fine, but I can't jog 20 miles. I don't care. I, you're my favorite. I love you. You're great. Let's go another block. How'd you do today? I went four blocks. Oh, Holy Ghost. Good, go, very good. Good, 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 good. You did an excellent job. You did, you're up to two miles. I'm up to four miles. He stays with you every step of the way. The demons come along and say, hey, you're running a mile and a half. <laughs> you fat slob. Those, those marathon guys are running 20, 20 miles. And look at the pace they're going. Look at that pace. See, the demons will always try and get you to compare yourself to somebody else. That will cause you to live out of your soul. And your emotions will take over. You will become depressed and down. <laughs> you, will, you will have a pity party. <laughs> pity parties always come out of the soul. Faith comes out of the spirit, man. I wasn't given certain gifts. I didn't do that. It's not your gifts, honey. It's the Holy Ghost gifts. That's what you're looking for. You start out small, and then you become a dangerous poison. Hello? Let's close. Listen, this guy here. Uh, I never heard of him. His dad was a pastor. And he decided to be like his dad. Got him a little church in Enid, Oklahoma. Pastored it for years. He started on the starting line. Out of shape. No anointing. Started pastoring. Kept doing it. Kept going after it year after year. Reached this point right here and said, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. I've been reading the Bible and uh, all these miracles in the book of Acts aren't happening in my Pentecostal holiness church. Something wrong here. Something's bothering me. Months go by. Weeks go by. Months go by. We, he said, man, this has really got me. I, I feel like quitting. I, I can't pastor this church anymore. I've been reading about all these miracles in the book of Acts. Something's wrong. I'm going to start praying and fasting. So the first time he started fasting, he got sick. He threw up. Ooh. Okay, you start at the starting line. right? You can't fast 40 days. Are you crazy? That's nuts. you got to fast an, a couple of meals to start. The Holy Ghost said, oh, you fasted two meals. Good. I'm with you right here. Yeah, two meals is great. I'm fine with that. Oh, you made it the whole day? Great. <laughs> Wonderful. I love you. Good job. That's what Earl Roberts did. Started there puking, worked his way, kept fasting, kept going. Is this tying together? A.A. Allen tells his wife, hey, I can't take this anymore. 
I'm traveling around the country and no miracles are happening. Nobody's getting healed. Nothing going on. I can't take this anymore. I'm going to go home tonight and get in my closet. And I ain't coming out of my closet till I hear from God. Oh, he goes in the closet and shuts the door. <laughs> His wife goes into the kitchen a few hours later. How you doing in there, honey? Good. She starts cooking dinner. The smell of the dinner sweeps out of the kitchen. Demonically, the demons suck the food smell out of the kitchen, under the door, into the closet. Whew. Oh my God. Bless you, Lord. Boop out the closet. <laughs> over the dinner table. That happened three or four times. He got. Mad. He said, By God, I'm going in the closet this time. I'm not coming out of that closet. Come hell or high water. The devil told his wife, Listen, go in there and cook up a big old turkey. <laughs> and you can feed that turkey to the turkey in the closet. <laughs> Guess what happened? He didn't come out of that closet. How how these two guys get that kind of a name? Well, they read the Bible and they went to church. No, well, that's not enough. They prayed. No, that's not enough. You got to overcome adversity. You got to be able to take a beating. Keep on picking. It's no easy road. Tonight, you know what you're going to do? You're going to take this Bible study to heart. And you're going to repent. Yeah, you're going to repent tonight. You're going to tell the good Lord you're sorry. And the Holy Ghost is going to heal you. And he's going to remind you. I gave you those promises. For all the promises of God in Christ are yes. Amen. You have a destiny and an appointed time by God for your new life. You have it. You failed in the past. Great. A. A. Allen failed. Then he overcame. And you can do the same. You can do the same. For God is no respecter of persons. Well, listen, I don't want to wait 22 years for a miracle to come like you're like you, Brother Mike. I have nothing to do with you. Neither does my daughter. We have nothing to do with you. God has your own destiny called out. It has nothing to do with mine. God has a destiny for you individually. Okay? And you are not Hymenius or Alexander or these other people who did not overcome and went back to their soul. Will you repent of it tonight? You have negative emotions that have been blocking your spirit man. And you're going to repent of them tonight. Will you do it? You've been living on a negative emotions. And you're going to repent of it. You're going to bring your soul under control. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And this Bible study. You saw that in scripture. You are not going to be like Sarah. And panic in fear and make poor judgments. You're not going to be like Demas. And go back to the pleasures of this life. That tempted Moses. Yeah, there is pleasure in sin. Moses turned it down. Demas went back to it. Tonight, you're going to be Moses. 
you can overcome your emotions and live out of your spirit man from this day forward aren't you all right three people said yes good that's enough for me father god let's pray lord jesus there are some people here tonight who have negative emotions and they are living out of those negative emotions and it is causing heartache and sorrow and misery in their lives it's causing failure in their finances their health their marriage i mean everything's going bad and the negative feelings and the negative emotions keep adding fuel to the fire well guess what lord by grace and mercy they have decided tonight to renounce it and the evil spirits that put that hook in their nose and have been pulling them around by their emotions that power of that spirit that unclean spirit is going to be broken in the name of Jesus and those negative emotions about their healing and the lack of healing is going to be broken tonight so they can be healed in Jesus name. in the name of Jesus Father, I ask you to forgive me right now for being an emotional Christian, a carnal Christian, a soul-based Christian. I ask you to forgive me right now. I ask you to give me mercy. Raise your hand if you need mercy. If you're living out of your soul and not your spirit, man, too much. Too much. Nobody lives out of their soul 100%, but it's too much. Raise your hand. Father God, see these hands raised? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Their soul is dominating their life in certain circumstances and they are not able to overcome they are repetitively failing because their emotions not their spirit man not the holy ghost not god's word is not leading their lives they're feeling too much they're feeling too much now come down here and see me in the front here if you got if your hands up and you want prayer you got emotional issues as they say in the counseling business, as your therapist said, you've got emotional issues, okay? And you're willing to repent of it. When you have emotional issues, what happens is you compensate for them. You try to deaden them. And that's why people drink. That's why they use drugs. That's why they eat too much. That's why they exercise too much. That's why they gamble. They're trying to escape the negative emotions in their soul so they'll quote feel better okay that is not how to do it that is not how to do it that will lead to an addiction a food addiction an alcohol a drug addiction trying to overcompensate for negative emotions in the soul that's how it works if you will repent of it tonight the holy spirit will heal your soul he is well able to do it. I certainly can't do it, but he is well able to do it. That is the truth. But you've got to repent first, or he won't do anything. Trust me, I've seen it. I've seen him do nothing, and it hurts me. It breaks my heart when he does nothing. But he doesn't do nothing on his own. He reacts to what he's seeing. If you repent, God is no respecter of person. You reacted emotionally with your ex-wife or ex-husband. You reacted emotionally at work with your co-worker. You reacted emotionally about the mistakes you made. And you started to condemn yourself and run yourself down. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. That's exactly what he does. Once you do that, the miracles stop right there. Your answer to your prayer stops right there. You don't get your prayer answer. Tonight you will. Tonight you will. Tonight you will. Come on, by faith. Will you do it by faith? I'll help you. Dear Jesus, I'm so incredibly sorry. I can't believe I reacted emotionally to him or her or them or whatever. God forgive me. God forgive me. That's killing me. I'm emotionally, in a way, ill. I'm emotionally ill. God have mercy on my soul. Father, forgive me. I want to live out of my spirit, man. I want to live with the Holy Ghost, not my emotions. 
not my fears, not my anxieties. It's blocking my faith. It's hurting me. Come on. Come on. Pray harder. Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me right now. In the name of Jesus. You just put your hands on your torso right here. Your soul is somewhere right in here. Put your hands in there in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind these negative emotions in my soul. I bind these spirits using those emotions to damage me and cause me to fail, cause me to overreact, cause me to become depressed and angry. Come out right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus. I command this emotional illness to leave my soul. I am not a soul man. I am a spirit man. I live by my spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command you to come out right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Fear, anxiety, fear of the future, fear of my children, fear of my parents, fear of my spouse. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Now, come out now. Eating disorder, drugs, alcohol, anger, frustration, bitterness, strife. No. Resentment come out of me in Jesus name come out right now Worry worry come out Worry come out of my body right now Go on, do it by faith do it by faith speak it out speak it by faith come out in Jesus name Come on out in Jesus name come on do it by faith do it by faith now come out in Jesus name do it by faith Do it by faith come out in Jesus money name fear and worry Drugs, alcohol, food, bad men. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come on out right now. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Negative emotions. Self-hatred. Self-disgust. Fear. Fear of my family members dying and going to hell. Fear of my children being lost. Fear of them being tormented by demons. I repent of it. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out right now. Negative emotion. Come out of me. Take a big breath and blow. Take a big breath. Blow it out. Come out of there. Right now. Come out right now. Go right now. Out. I let this worry and fear out of me right now. Take a breath and blow. Come out right now. Go. Come out right this second. Go. Come out right now. Go. Get out of my body. Keep yawning. They're coming out right now. Keep yawning. Go. Come out of it. There, there, there it is. There's another one. Come on, sweetheart. You got the ability. Take it. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of my body, I said. Come out of my body right now. What's wrong with you, sweetheart? Sometimes I have like negative thoughts. What triggers them? Huh? What triggers them? Come up and out right now. Come up and out right now. I don't know. Just like something. Usually, think more negative. Okay, did that start when you were a kid? Every tenth of When that started? Yeah, probably when I was younger. Okay, raise your hand. Father God, I want you to go back in time right now. She got hurt when she was young. Something bad happened. And the devil started to put negative thoughts in her mind. And she started to receive them. She started receiving them. And the devil's trying to give her an anxiety disorder. An anxiety disorder. She's going to repent of it right now. Lord, I repent of receiving negative thoughts. Satan, lose your hold. I repent of receiving negative thoughts. And this pit in my stomach, this fear. Knot right there comes out tonight. There's a knot right in there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Lust, carnality, worry, worry about my family, worry about my kids, worry and fear about my kids. I repent of it. Just repent of it. Repent of worrying about your kids. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up and come out. Get out of her. Come out of her right now. Come out right now, I said. Come out. Spirit, I curse you. Out. Come out right now. Come out. Fear of the future. Fear of not being delivered. Fear of not being healed. God. There it is. Come out of there. Get out of the body. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on now. Hurry up. There it comes. There it comes. There it comes. Go in Jesus' mighty name. 
Hold that. Come out right now. Hold it. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come on out. I just get mad at Satan. Come out of me. Say it. Not of fear. Right there. That knot. Come out of me right now. Lift out of me. Get out of that body. Lust in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Go. Lust, come out. Leave me. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. Right now. Come out of there right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of that body. Come out quicker. Come out faster. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly, Spirit. Spirit, quickly come out. Satan, lose your hold. Go now. Come out. Sadness and sorrow. Failure. Self-criticism. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Right now, I said, Satan, lose your hold now. Get out of her stomach. Come out of her womb. Come out of her womb. Don't you tell me no. You tell me yes. Come out. Come on out, spirit. Right now, go. Right now, go. Come on out. Out, I said. Get out of that body right now, I said. You come out of there. Every ugly man that ever touched my body, every one of them. Any transfer spirit that got in through sex, come out of my, come out of the womb right there. Come out of there. Take a breath and bump. Come out. There he comes right there. Here he comes. Come out. Come on out. There he comes. There he is. Come on out. Get out of her. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Hold it. Come out right now. There he is. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Go. Hurry up. Come out of that body. Every one of them. Every ugly man. Adultery, fornication, anal sex, oral sex. Come out right now. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Go now. Go now. Come out right now. There he is. He's coming out right now. There they come. Come on out right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. I told you to go. Come out of me. Come on, sweetie. Get mad. Fight harder and get mad. Come on, sweetheart. Fight hard. Come on, just repent of it. Say it. Say it. Just repent of it. Stop worrying. Just repent of it. What were the negative emotions? Oh, you know, just uh, I'm better, but it's just. What's the emotion? Uh, the negative emotions. What were they? Kind of the same stuff. Just What's that? Failure. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and repent of it again. Let's go and start over. Come on. You have? Okay, well then. Come out. Get him out of there. Go. There he comes right there. Go. Go. Keep going. Okay, for the next hour. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come on out. Quickly. Quickly, for the next hour, you're co they're all coming out. Suicide. Come out of that body right now. Suicide. Come out. Go. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out right now. Go. I'm not going to end up homeless. I'm not going to die homeless. I'm not going to die a loser. This is a rejection spirit. Come out of my body right now. Unbelief and doubt. Come out quickly. Get out of my body and come out quicker. Come out of my stomach right now. Another spirit from my ex-husband. Go now. There he is. Come out. Come out of my stomach. Come out. The ex goes. Come out of there. Non-stop. Go. Come out right now. Non-stop. Get out of my body. Come on. Fight hard. Do not stop for one hour. Go. Do not stop. Come on out. All of them come out tonight. Every one of them. Go now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hey, what's wrong with you, honey? You know, I just like I uh, I just worry about my kids a lot. My brother went back. That's one there. Yeah. One of them, drugs. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Okay. What's your name? Matisse. Okay. Stand over here. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I repent of worrying about my daughter. I repent because worry means I do not believe. Fear and worry and faith cannot coexist. If you are worrying, then you do not believe. If you can believe, all things are possible. Come out of there. All things are possible to those who believe. Not those who fear. Not those who worry. And I'm going to repent of it right this second. 
I'm gonna repent of it right now And I want all my daughter's demons out of me tonight All the generational spirits from my family tree all spirits from false religions All evil spirits of doubt and unbelief and fear of her future. I repent of it right now Go ahead and repent Tell the Lord you're sorry Hey, what you need? Andre. Andre. Oh, nice to meet you. Say what you need? Say what? What do you need? Man, got a lot of problems going on, man. So, uh, why know. are you down here? Deliverance. Try to do deliverance. What? Deliverance. Deliverance. From. From oh, man, I, I got. Hey, now that was a weak repentance. That was weak. Huh? See, you didn't repent. See that? Okay, you've got to release your daughter to the Lord or she's not going to get healed. Okay, she's finished. Will you will you give her to Jesus? Will you trust him to break her and heal her? Okay, go ahead and repent. Come on. Let's repent of it so you can get healed tonight. So she can get healed. Okay, what do you need? What's the problem? I got issues with, like injuries, uh, addiction, you know, even like sex, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now listen, those are unclean spirits. Now when did they get in? What age? I can't live. What? I wouldn't even be able to tell you. Long time ago. I Was it grade I school? Like 14, 15. How'd they get in? Huh? How? I think about it all, all the time, you know what I mean? No, I mean, how did they no. get in? Oh, Where somebody abused you as a kid no, or beat you? No, or no, you look at a Playboy? I mean, TV, how did it happen? It was TV probably, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, are, are you are you a Christian? Yeah, I, yeah. How do you know I, that? I claim it, so I, I claim, you know what I mean? Okay. I, I claim now, I don't believe have you ever had any, Have you ever had any experience with the Holy Spirit? Okay, now just follow just follow my lead here. Okay, uh, you, you're not a Christian, so first thing you got to do, you have to become born again, and that's a spiritual experience. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's no point in casting demons out of you if you're not a born again Christian, because the demons will just come back. Yeah, they come. I know. They just come right back. Okay. Raise your hand. Then. Let's go. Okay, dear Jesus, you see this guy standing here? He is supposed to be a preacher and a witness of the incredible grace and mercy of God he has committed horrible sins horrible sins over the years he has hurt himself and hurt many other people and tonight he is sorry that he hurt these people he's sorry he hurt himself but most of all he's sorry he hurt you He's sorry he hurt you, Lord. You had all these gifts and all this anointing that you wanted to give him. But he's not sorry he hurt you. And tonight he's going to tell you how sorry he is that he hurt you. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for my sin. Say it. I'm so sorry for the life I've led. I'm so sorry for the life I led. I'm so sorry for the horrible sins I committed. I'm trying to get this guy born again. He's not born again. I'm so sorry for this wickedness I've been involved in. Say it. Come on. Repeat it. Make him repeat the repentance prayer. Come on. Say it, sir. Say it. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Come on. Pray like you mean it. God, I'm so sorry. There it is. Come on. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetheart. Let him go. Let him go. Spirits, come out of her. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, you know that woman? You know that lady? That's your wife? Uh, is there Hinduism in your family tree? What religion is in your family tree? With what? Christian? Christian religion? Okay. The, the daughter's on drugs. What's wrong with her? There's nothing wrong with her. Okay. Come on. Sweetheart, just repent of it. Just turn your daughter over to the Lord. The Bible says we are to cast all our care upon him for he cares for us. 
He loves you and cares for you, but he's not going to heal your daughter as long as you're trying to protect her and heal her. Now, by faith, do it. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I'm giving her to you. I'm giving my life to you. I'm giving him my husband. I'm giving you my husband. I'm giving you my marriage and the pain of my marriage. I'm giving you all of it. All of it right now. Come on, just turn it over to the Lord. Turn it on over. The Holy Ghost will heal you. Satan, loose your hold of them. Man and woman of God. Let go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of there. You get out of there, you rotten spirit. Come on, keep coughing. Come on, there he comes. There he comes. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, devils. There they come. Glory to God. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of there. Come out. Lost and anger. Lost and anger. Bitterness. Strife. Come out. Come out. Drugs. Come out. Come out. Dear Jesus, help me. Dear Jesus, help me. Say it. So, dad, girl, tell him. Reach out. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. And a girl, keep going. Close your eyes. Say it. Lord Jesus, and a girl, keep going. Come on. Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Yes. Out. I let my daughter go. I let her go. Out. In Jesus' holy name. Now. Now, I said. I let my daughter go into the hands of the Lord. I let her go now. From this second on. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Don't look at your mom. Stand over here. Get away from your mom. Yeah, that girl. Ready? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And a girl. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Help her pray. Can you help her pray? Just follow her. Thank you, Jesus. She'll lead you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Get out of the body. I said, hurry up. Come on. I gave it a fear. I told you to go. Come on now. I told you to go. Get out of me. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. I flew in from Chicago. What's wrong with you? You know what? I flew in from Chicago. I learned about your ministry from YouTube. Like, was it two weeks ago? And three weeks ago. And you sent me an email about um, self deliverance. And I started on the list. I just spoke Deliverance from what? I'm a generational person. You're lazy? That thing is coming with depression. It caused what? I bet the depression is the mind. Your depression over what? What triggers the depression? This was from, I know it's rooted from, um, we call it soul ties. Just, um, Who you got a soul tie to? I had a, my ex, um, I was engaged to him. I called him, I called him, and went off. But why? Why? Because he had, it was a narcissist. And so, oh, that was a smart move. Uh, now, listen, you flew here from out of state. Yes. You must be desperate. Right. What was your ex's name? I don't know if Terry, but I don't know. Terry? This is being a thoughtful thing. No. So just, just say things. Did you sleep with him? No, he was a virgin. Hmm? But he was a virgin. But we also just kind of played around with him. He didn't have Okay. Did you pick up a transfer spirit from him? I would say from one of my other people's boyfriend's guy. What's his name? His name is Marco. 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 Marcos. Marco. 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 Okay, ready? Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you see this beautiful woman standing here? She made a tragic error years ago, a tragic mistake. She picked up an adultery spirit from some guy that was infected. Her conscience told her, do not sleep with that guy. Do not even be around that guy. She disobeyed. She disobeyed and then picked up a transfer. Marco, right now in the name of Jesus, you come out of her. Come out of her vagina. Come out of her womb right now. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Come on out of her. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Right here. here he comes. Here he comes. There he is right there. There he is, Marco. Come out. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out. Hold that. Go. Come out now. Marco. Come out, buddy. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Hurry up, you pervert. Come out of that body right now. Marco. There he is. Come out of the womb. Come out of her womb right this second, I said. Come out of her womb. Come out of her womb. 
Come out, sin, fornication. Oral sex, I command you to come out. Oral sex, come out. Right now. Come out, you pervert. Go. Come out, you pervert. Right now. Right now. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come out right now. You get out of that body right now. Come out right this second. She slept with Marco and picked up the demon. Marco. Get out of that body. Doctor, go. Come on. Fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out of that body right now. You have the authority to smash these things. I want you to do it now. Go. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my hips. Come out of my stomach. And I said, out. Oh, there he comes. Witchcraft and sorcery. Get out of there. Witchcraft, sorcery. Come on out. Go. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. How are you feeling? Yeah. All right. What do you need the Lord to do for you tonight? What kind of demon is it? I don't know. You don't know? What, what's it do? It's, uh, there's stuff in my butt, in my thoughts, and it speaks through my mouth. How, how, when did he get in? There's stuff in my body. When did he get in? I think he's been there since I was kid. I talked to you. Remember me? I was in Tucson. Yeah. And I talked to you. Yeah. What happened after you were in Tucson? Well, it's still doing the same stuff. You still a team challenge? Um, you still a team challenge? I'm not a team challenge. You're not? No. Were you when I saw you? I live in Tucson. Yeah, no, you you were you were in team challenge? Oh, okay. Got the wrong guy. Now listen, is there anything you have to repent of tonight? Anything at all? Anything you any sin you're doing? Anything? Do you speak in tongues? You don't? Okay. Now just close your eyes and raise your hands. And you just repeat after me. Bora Baba. Korashati. Beko Mama. Andoria. Velo Bala. Go ahead. Just repeat it. Velo Bala. Konda Shama. Beko Lasita. Bora Basha. Konda Namashide. Now inside your head, in your mind, not out loud, but inside your head, just scream at him right there. Scream at him. Scream at him in your mind like you hate his guts. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of my body in the name of Jesus. I hate your guts. I hate your guts. I command you to go right now. I hate your guts. I command you to go right now. Get out of my body right now. Right now, I said, by the authority of the word of God, come out of my body now. Come out of there. Come out of here. Come up and out. Right now, go. Right now, go. Here. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, get out. Get out of my body right now. Go. I hate you. Come out. I hate you. Come out, I said. Come out of there. Come out of here, I said. Now. Now, I said. Get out of my body. Come out of my body right now. Did you hear me? Come out right now. I hate your guts. Come out. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Go. Come out right now. What's he doing in there? It's not, it's not doing anything right now. What, did he went dormant? I don't think so. Is it gone? I can feel it still there. Baby. Where? How you feeling? Oh, no. oh, no. But he kind of kind of shut up. For him. He's trying to hide. He doesn't think you hate him, so he's gonna try and hide. He thinks that I want it, want it here. Yeah, 
Now, you know, the look on your face doesn't look like hate. That, your look on your face doesn't look like hate. stuff to my face, dude. Is it doing it now? Yes. I can okay. feel it. Uh, now he's manifesting. Now he's he does, he does that. He does that to me all, all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks he owns you. I don't even feel my body. It does stuff in my body to where I don't even yeah. feel. My, my Were you ever body. involved in witchcraft? No. Were your parents? No. Grandparents? Did anybody ever put a curse on you? They tried to tell me that these people. They tried to tell me that people did. I don't know if it's true or not. Okay. Now let's try it again. Okay. But this, it was there way before I even met these people, though. Met what people? These people were here. It was here in uh, Sunny Slope. Oh, you. But the, but the demon was already there before I even met them. Okay. At what age when he got in? What age? I don't know. I think it was there since I was a kid. Yeah. Remember, it told me. You told me to ask it, and it told me that it got through to Benny. Oh, Benny. Yeah. Benny. Yeah, Benny. Remember that. Is that true? Or is he lying? I don't know. What did Benny do to you? They tried to, they tried to tell me that they arrest me, but I, can't, I don't have a memory of that. Where is Danny now? I don't know. He's still alive? I have no idea. How old is he? I don't know. I was a little kid. He was a grown man. Oh, he was. Okay. So he may not even be alive. All right. Now, do you hate this thing? Yes. Excellent. Put your hands on the side of your head. It's like this. Okay. Hey, can you help me with this guy? Some guy named Danny molested him when he was a kid. And this demon moves around down there and then it moves his face around. And I'm talking to him, he's not listening to me. Every man come out, all of them, every one of them. The devil took advantage of my good looks and brought me demon infected men. I want them all out now. Come out, arrogance, pride, vanity. Come out. Stupid decisions, stupidity, <laughs> emotional illness, soul. Come out, I said. Come out right now. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of my head. Come out now. Come out. Come out of my body right now. I told you to come out, Satan. I hate your guts. Come out now, I said. Go. <laughs> Go. Shame. Embarrassment. Failure. Failure. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of there. Every ugly man goes tonight. Go. Fight harder. Come out. Come out. Now say it out loud. I hate you. Come out. There you go. Just get mad. I hate you. Come out. 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 Get out of there. You rotten devil. I ain't playing with you. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my vagina right now. Come out of there. Come out of my lips. Come out. Oral sex. Kissing. Come out of my lips. Now. Come out now. Every man. Every ugly man. Go. Every ugly man. Go. Come out. How'd she do? She got some stuff out. I give this to you so I don't. She wants to get rid of her I don't want it. Okay. Now. Could you help that girl? She yes. got lost demons from Chicago. She flew in from Chicago. Okay. How are you feeling right now? You got? Are you addicted to something? Every, I'm always addicted. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, what's the root of it? Um, it's gonna sound crazy, but it what's was. What's the root of it? It was. It started when I was a baby. Right. And there was a like a curse. Somebody fondle you? No, I. There was, they put a curse it sounds on crazy, you. Crazy a curse. Like a satanic Who did it? thing. I don't know. I just, I, mean, know. I just know it happened from three different people. 
Did, you, my dad. did your mother say, what? Your dad? And then my dad. Was what did he do? Well, you know, he was a pastor and he was, um... Did he fondle you? Well, yeah, he tried to have sex with me. But he didn't? I got away. Good. I mean, just once? Well, yeah, but and after it's a that, long story. I know it is. After that, were you promiscuous? Oh, yeah. Lots of guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now look. What happened was, when you were little, something transferred in here. A spirit transferred in. Okay? Mm -hmm. It wasn't your fault. What? It wasn't your fault. Right. You weren't at fault. Right. And so you're eligible for mercy and love from God. It wasn't your fault. And the devil told you that nobody loves you. Raise your hands. Dear Jesus, it wasn't my fault. You love me. And I love you. I'm sorry I hurt myself. I love you, Jesus. There it is. Let your tears go. It's the Holy Ghost coming on you. Come on. There it is. Come out, devils. You come out of her stomach right now. Come out of her throat. Out. Come out of there. I command her pastor, dad's demons to come out. Come up. Dad, come out of there right now. Come out of her stomach. Here he is. Come on out. Take a breath and blow. Come on out. Dad, come on. Come out of me. I forgive my dad and I release him right now. Keep blowing. Good. Blow. I want my dad's demons out now. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on. Out. out. Come out, spirit. You're out of me. Yeah, there you go. Get out of me. Childhood perversion. Childhood curses. I was not at fault. Come out of me right now. I am loved. Keep laughing. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Of course. You have it. You have it. You just have to receive it. That's it. It's already yours. It is? Yes. Right now? Absolutely. You asked for it. I, okay, that's all there is. It wasn't your fault. I've been sabotaging myself my whole life. No, listen to me. There's a huh. spirit in your brain. It's called the spirit of rejection. That's yeah. the main one. It is. Yes. Raise Father God in Jesus' name. She releases the spirit of rejection yes. from her dad yes. and from her baby when she was an infant. Spirit, I command you to come out right now. Rejection, depression, gloom, self-sabotage, self-hatred, come out now. Settling for men, come out, go. Settling for bad, demon-infected men, out, out. Enemy. Adultery, fornication, oral sex, come out right now. Go. Go. Come out of me. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. You speak in tongues. Go ahead. Good. Excellent. Louder. Let it go. Louder. Holy Ghost, come. Louder. Holy Spirit, come. Good. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love you. Tell him you love him. It was all lies. I love him. So There's no need to take drugs. You already have your future. Huh? I'm not high. I'm just well. No, no I know you're not. Thank you. You're, it's all. It was all up here. It's all lies. It wasn't your fault. All this time. It wasn't their fault. What your dad did. It wasn't a fault. What happened when you're infant? You were innocent. Okay, that's right. Now I'm ready to wage war. Is there I anything you haven't for forgiven of? Is right there anything you haven't repented of? Well, I switched addictions, and so I was taking the Adderall because I started no. eating. Okay, hold on. 
That's not what the problem is. That's the symptoms of it. That's not a problem. What's the, the root of it? What lies? What's what's the main two? That I'm worthless and that there's no hope because I'm never going to succeed. That's the rejection demon. He got in when you were a kid. That's the root of it, and he's the one that drives you to use. It's not you. How, you know what you said tonight, and the fact that I came. How? Because I'm a I'm a warrior. I can work for my kids and stuff. But when that hits me, it hits me when I'm not expecting it. I completely flat, and I'm like, Lord. I want to, I want to do things for the Lord, but like you said, I'm not going to be able to if I'm just flattened all the time. Now they attack you when you, when you're making some progress. That's what they normally do. Every time I come it, here, it's a rejection spirit. Yeah. Every time I come here, I get hit so hard. I've lost everything, my house, everything, everything. Now, okay, that stuff's easy for God yeah. to restore. That's not the problem. The problem is it's rejection being in there. He's the root of the whole disaster. It's him. He puts you, good. Now we're getting somewhere. I, you hate him. That's what we need. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. That's what we need. You're on the right track. But the root of it is rejection. I want to do this. Of course you can do this. Listen, you've got to get healed first. There's nothing wrong with you. So I know when I leave. I know what Monday. No, the demons are going to attack you when you leave here. Okay? That's what they normally do. That's their job. But the so root, no, you've got to know the root is rejection. Okay. He's your enemy. Here's you, the real you. That's the person God loves. This is him. God does not love him. He uses. He hates you. He thinks you're worthless. He thinks you're a failure. The real you is a beautiful woman. This one wants you to settle. So when I, if it happens again, what happens again? If the thoughts and all that, you have to rebuke them right on the spot. As soon as it happens, uh, I command grab your that. Spirit every come, here. come here for a second. Okay. This, is, this is your ticket. <laughs> this is your ticket out of this mess. Okay. This is it right here. Oh okay. yay! Okay. Now look. Okay. This, the rejection spirit usually hides somewhere in here, but then he puts thoughts in the mind, so he goes like this. Click. As soon as he clicks here, you glosa is the Greek word for tongues. You have a real nice gift of tongues, but it sounds a little bit. Stale. stale, a little stale, like it hasn't been used a lot. Okay, I want you to switch over here to singing in tongues. <laughs> okay? Demons hate that. You know it what? Dry, it's like scratching the chalkboard. That's what he's robbed from you. me. I'm mm -hmm. a singer, and I haven't been able to sing because I'm so afraid now. Well, that's I a was fear. So that's afraid. a fear spirit. Now the rejection demon lets in the other spirits. The fear spirits usually hide down in the gut. Well, okay, there must now, be a lot of them. Close your close your eyes there. All right, now just start singing in tongues. Rumu shavole lora rumu la. Beautiful. Now see, you're looking at me. That's him looking at me. It is. Yeah, you felt a little insecure. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that? Yes. So you I looked over at me like that. Exactly. You already had God's approval. You don't need my approval. Who cares about me? Now look this way this time and sing. Rimo shavole, dando ramo shavola. Good, good. Ura mura. Oh, you looked again. Repent of it. I didn't know if we were done. Go ahead. You wanted to be done. That's insecurity. Say it. Repent of it. I'm sorry, Lord. I don't know. I'm sorry. Start saying. Good. He forgave you. Sing. 
It only takes about a half a second to be forgiven of anything. Really? If you confess it. If you hide it, you're in trouble. Okay, sing. Dandora marebura ture. Dandora. Atta girl. Beautiful. Sing it out. What's up, Mike? How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I was great. You walked away right here when you were singing. Of course I want. Now, see, there's that insecurity again. Well, see, well, who wants to Come on over here. Now you're making now you're making excuses. You weren't singing to the wall, you were singing to the Lord. You just called him a wall. Oh, okay, turn oh, around this way. Now go ahead and repent. Well, you just did. How'd it go? Good. Did you repent? I did. Um, well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Beautiful. You got a gorgeous singing in tongues voice. I think it's fantastic. You're a, you're a spiritual powerhouse. You're just not using it. Sing it out. Oh, see that? Just repent of it. More fear and insecurity. Repent of it. Just repent. Sing it out. Sing. At a girl. Sing it out. How'd it go? They were just flying out of it. You have a nice anointing, you're just not using it. You're loaded. There's nothing wrong with you. They just started coming right out. You've got a good heart on you. There's nothing wrong with you. That's the truth. Sing. She was molested as a child, so she's got rejection demons right here. Then, the, then she's got fear demons in here, and then she got anxiety and insecurity. So I have to force her out of it. Sing it louder. Good to see you. Love you. That a girl. Say now. You said I'm sorry. Repent of that. Repent of it. Am I? I think I am. You said I'm sorry. That was that it's was a repenting? sin. No, you said I'm sorry to me, didn't you? No, I was talking to you. About what were you sorry for? Because you told me to repent. Because I look, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Okay, now see, you just said I don't know what I'm talking about. Repent of that. Oh. She didn't program. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, sing again. What else has God has shown you? Like you said, there's that thing on the inside. I was loaded with. Anointing, you're just not using it. Crank that stuff out of there. The spirits and the wounds out. You can do it. Yeah, but these men, bad men transferred stuff in there. So you got to kind of unpack that first. No, the rejection demons let the other ones in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's what happened to her. How much do you see more in there? There's a rack of them in there now. How many guys were there? I would say definitely since since freshman year in college we are now probably 30. 30. See? 30 now you, plus. Yeah, see, so you, you were cursed because you're attractive. And the demons pick out the good-looking women, and they send them plants. They're all plants. They're loaded, and so they send them there. Then they try to get in your heart and get you to fall in love with them. Now, Boom. I'm then you're in deep year. trouble. I'm now almost, I'm approaching my eighth year. Oh, good. Well, so, so all we got to do is get that cleaned out. And you're, you're booming. This from way that way past. Yeah, that, that happens all the time. You're on the right road. No, but you're you're not collecting anymore because you repent it. See, but now all we have to do is get the old stuff out, and you're you're a killer. Hi, sweet. Hi, young buddy. Haven't seen you in a while. Well, hello. I was sick for a while. I know. I know. I was in the hospital. Now I'm doing better. That's good. Now it seems like every time we come, it's like you're not around. No. 
but we could be here more. All right. We look at you get much trained Yeah, I like a little anorexic there for a while. Come on. Hey, it happens. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetheart. Love you.